Frankenstein, or the modern Prometheus, was first published on the 1st of January 1818. There's a third edition, uh, which was published in 1831, that's substantially revised. But the 1818 edition is more immediate and more forthright. Frankenstein was written by Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley. She was the daughter of the pioneering feminist Mary Wollstonecraft and the radical firebrand philosopher William Godwin. Frankenstein was inspired on the banks of Lake Geneva in Switzerland in 1816, the year without a summer, when thunderstorms played over the lake caused by a gigantic volcanic explosion on the Indonesian island of Tambora. Mary Shelley was there with Percy Shelley, Lord Byron, his doctor, John Polidori, and Claire Claremont. They had a ghost story telling competition one evening, and after that, Mary had a dream in which she dreamt of the animation of Frankenstein. Frankenstein is often called a Gothic novel, but does it have anything supernatural about it? There are no ghosts, there are no demons, there's no magic, unless you count the magic of science, this way of animating a corpse, a way of creating life through invisible powers. Is that magic or is it science fiction? What is it that Victor Frankenstein creates? Well, first of all, it was called a monster, Frankenstein's monster. Then people began to call it a creature, but I call it the being. It's a being that poses questions about what it is to be, to have identity. So what is the being? Well, the being isn't completely human. He's made up of bits and pieces of dead humans and also parts of dead animals. So he's a hybrid. He's a cross-species creation. And in that sense, he can begin to, I think, suggest questions of rights to us. Should he have any rights? He has intelligence, he has sentience. But this was a time at which animal rights, for example, were being debated, and the being really crystallises those discussions. The being is often sentimentalised as being somehow pure and indeed a vegetarian. He's not a vegetarian. He eats meat, he eats offal. And in fact, he likes it because he's, it's been cooked. And this relates to one of the overriding themes of the novel. The subtitle is The Modern Prometheus. Prometheus, of course, who stole fire from the gods. And in one sense, this fire is what can animate life. It's the life-creating force. In another sense, fire is, of course, a staple, and we use it to cook food. We use it to make meat, in fact, palatable. Despite what you might think about the being as he appears in films, in the novel, he's not some shambling zombie. No, he's very loquacious. He's very persuasive. He's very convincing in the account that he gives of himself. He can read and he can write. In fact, he's read Paradise Lost. So should we be sympathetic to him? Should we treat him as a creature? Don't forget that he's a mass murderer as well. The novel Frankenstein is set in the 1790s the decade of the French Revolution. And as such, it is very much saturated with issues of rights, of duties and responsibilities. What do we owe our fellow beings? From the perspective of the 21st century, this is a novel about artificial intelligence, about genetic modification, about transplantation and about medical ethics. It is a novel about what it is to be human and as such speaks to us today.